Hi everyone, and welcome to episode seven of CubeTube. And before we start off, I'm first going to answer a question uh, which came from one of the viewers, uh, which was uh, related to the episode about Tennessee. And in Tennessee, I explained that Tennessee loves to uh, react with elements that have one plus electron um, compared to um, one minus electron. Now, if you want to watch the videos about uh, salt makers and halogens, uh, by all means, click on the um, click on the video which is now on the screen uh, about Tennessee. Now, the question was: um, if you have these have one electron less and these one have one electron extra, would the same go for the second um, column here? So these elements in the second column, they all have two uh, electrons extra, so to say, uh, to be the perfect combination. Um, would they also react with the ones that are missing two electrons in here in this specific column? Now we will discuss this in later videos when we have elements uh, of, of, of those columns. But the answer to that is yes. These specific elements love to react with the, the ones here. What you also can uh, sometimes see is that ones that have one extra electron, two of those elements love to connect with one of these that have two electrons extra. Because in the end, everybody wants to be a, a noble gas or at least have a noble gas configuration. Hope that answers your question. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's see what element we will be discussing today. And it is going to be element 40. And that's the element of zirconium. It's a, it's kind of a special element. So uh, let's uh, first put the numbers in. So we see it's element number 40, it has a Z and an R. And it has a atom mass of 91.224. And then let's put on the gloves and take a look what it, uh, what it looks like. There we go. So what do we got here? We got here a little block in plastic. So what does this look like? Zirconium. To be honest, before I uh, I received this, I never heard of it. It was a uh, it was totally new element to me and it was really cool to uh, to investigate it and to do some research on it. So what do we got here? We got here a beautiful like almost silvery. Yeah, it's kind of dark. It looks a little bit like coal, but it, yeah, but it's more silver as you can see. And it's, it's darker than tin. And it's also, yeah, it's a little bit lighter than nickel. So, yeah. Um, so what do we got here? So it has 40 protons and 40 electrons, uh, because that's basically why it's element number 40. Um, it also appears in five different isotopes. Um, that would be ZR90, 91, 92, 94, and 96. Now you may wonder um, by by hearing me name all these things is like why isn't there an isotope ninety three? Now to do a little bit of a recap of what um, what an isotope is, an isotope is um, a atom that basically has uh, forty protons and the rest of it neutrons. So in case of ZR ninety, you would have forty protons and fifty neutrons. Now, 93 would have 40 protons and 53 neutrons. But for some reason, um, that cannot exist. So as soon as we would try to make, or, or nature tries to make an element like that, it will just start decaying. And this is the other isotopes, 90, 91, 92, 94, 96. Those are stable atoms. Maybe they decay very slowly, but in this case, they, they, they are not, and they will just um, yeah, stay what, what they are. They're a stable element. Again, it's a beautiful, beautiful work again. Looks really nice. So what can we say about, um, about zirconium? So it has a, 
atomic mass of 91.224, as you can uh, as you can see, and I just wrote down. The name zirconium comes from uh, the mineral in which it is found. Um, this mineral is called zircone, and that name was derived from zarkun in Arabic or zarkun in um, in Persian, which means gold colored. Now, this is not really gold colored, is it? But when you find it, so I, I, I looked up some pictures and I have a mineral collection as well. I, I would love to get my hands on, uh, on a mineral of Sharkoon because it really looks a little bit um, like, a, like a golden nugget. Um, it was deco discovered in 1789 and it's a transition metal. Now, again, what that is, I will explain in a later video. The melting point is 855 degrees, which is, uh, which is pretty high. Now that's some interesting properties. It's lighter than steel, um, so that makes it useful. Um, you might say for uh, for 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 purpose for certain purposes. But the other uh, interesting property, and that is basically why it um, why it is used a lot, is it's very corrosion resistant. Now, what does that mean? Corrosion means chemically affected by its environment. Um, everybody's seen iron. Um, and iron, when you leave it outside, it will start to um, get impacted by the oxygen around it. So the uh, oxygen will start reacting with the metal itself. Now, for most metals, uh, and it's not always oxygen, it's also uh, yeah, other things, and it can be other things in the air as well, um, or the surroundings. But um, iron is most notable for that. Now, this iron, or this metal, does not react with um, with its environment, or very little. Now, that makes it useful for the applications that we're going to discuss. So 90% of the production of zirconium is used for nuclear reactor technology. Now, to give a brief explanation on what a nuclear reactor is, a nuclear reactor is basically a steam turbine, but instead of using the heat from um, uh, from, uh, for instance, coal, oil, or, or gas. It utilizes the heat from the splitting of uranium. And that causes to, you, to produce a lot less CO2. And this is why it was a preferable method um, uh, in, in, in the past 100 years. Now, in addition to the heat that it produces when you're splitting the uranium, it also produces um, radiation in the form of neutrons. Now, this is a problem because humans can't really deal with, uh, with the radiation of neutrons. So what, it do, what they do is uh, these uranium rods that they use to produce the heat with and where they're splitting the, um, the atoms, um, they put around there like a, like a casket of a zirconium alloy. Um, and that's basically zirconium and some, some, some other metals. And the zirconium is very effective in blocking the neutrals and absorbing them. Now, once again, you can see that an alloy here is used to basically, uh, two different metals combined, uh, makes the properties of an individual uh, metal better. Uh, so in this case, you would need something strong, but you also need something that, that can absorb the, the, the neutrons. So you basically combine it with, um, with zirconium. However, this alloy um, that you then create must not exceed a temperature of, uh, of 750 degrees. And if it does, it can react. So then all of a sudden it will start reacting with the water, um, uh, with the water around it. Now, one of the things that you should know about a nuclear reactor, those rods are most of the time sitting in water and those uh, zirconium alloys are around it. Now, there is basically two cases, like the accidents in Chernobyl and Fukushima, where this played a, um, a, a, a role uh, in the nuclear accidents, where the zirconium, uh, the, the, the reactor melted, it started heating up, then all of a sudden the water became too hot, the zirconium went too hot, they started reacting with each other, um, you get uh, hydrogen, and the hydrogen is highly explosive. Now, also what we make of it is the walls of chemical reactors. There's also chemical reactors in which you create certain chemicals. Um, those are also made of zirconium, also because of that um, little um, 
uh, that, that very big corrosion resistant property that they have. Now, if you make a crystal out of zirconium oxide, so suppose you would have this metal and you would, you would combine it with oxide, so um, um, oxygen in this case, you can cut it into crystals and those crystals would really resemble um, diamonds. So it's also used uh, as, a, as a fake diamond. Uh, to um, yeah, as, as another example of what it does. So I hope you enjoyed the episode again. Uh, by all means, if you liked it, um, subscribe. Uh, next week, we're going to do uh, another element again. And uh, for now, have a nice week.